addition of atoms, you change tremendously the way society works and how it functions. You know, I think that the, in the, at the end of the day, what we're seeing is the explosion of microtrans, the explosion of individuality, I think is, is now being met with, I think, a, a more commonality of values of fairness and tolerance. Uh, you can't have a, a society where so many people are living so many different and so many more accepted lifestyles unless society is becoming more tolerant. That many of the Republican social wars in the past actually didn't unify society, they divided society in ways, and now you've seen a 10 or 15 point shift in many of these issues that I think is bringing people together more. And so, uh, quite the opposite than when people, I think, first at first blush try to look at the theory of microtrends. In many ways, if you have a society that tolerates and understands that people can be different in so many ways, you have a society that is more cohesive, better able to continue to be democratic, that's an introduction to the book, and Nancy, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Nancy. somebody else's primary research, uh, <clears throat> what we did was we gathered a, a combination of <coughs> polls and statistics. Sometimes we did our own polls because we were interested in some of the things on, on parenting and other issues where we kind of probed more deeply. But, but a lot of the point of microtrends is that you could be a microtrender. You know, you could, you know, the, the, the information is out there. You know, people often ask me, well, how did you, uh, you know, how do you find microtrends? And I said, look, you know, oftentimes it starts with a theory or a hypothesis about, about, you know, how people are changing. I mean, you know, something like, uh, I didn't go through the dramatic, the, the upscale tattoo, but there's a dramatic growth of up to 30 million people with tattoos. It's even beyond the microtrend. So there are a lot of things when you start with a theory, you know, does that seem to have spread to you know, the more upper class, something that started in the lower class, and then you begin to look at the statistics, gather information, and then either that proves out or not. And then my second question is, I can see how the micro trends are really valuable and useful in you know, creating political campaigns as well as you know, marketing you know, and stuff like that. But can you give me an example of how a micro trend played out in maybe like a more traditional communications role that we've done any kind of communication that well, you know, first I just sort of say in terms of politics, you know, politics is often about Big goals, and Rose explained, you know, Senator Clinton really talks about four big goals. And this is, you know, in, you see a lot of marketing that I think is, is finally targeted because if you have a 1% product, for example, you know, you have a success. I mean, I've been quite interested in uh, one of the things we found was this dramatic growth of teenage knitters. Right? And so I found that. The, if you go back to the teenage knitting sites, of which there turn out to be plenty, they almost all refer to micro trends because we've crystallized something that's counterintuitive, that's that's different, and then promotes you know promotes itself. So when you say that they, <coughs> in public relations, people are doing different things. If it, if, it, if 
something like teenage knitters gets attention, you know, in a way that it hasn't gotten attention, that's counterintuitive, and people go out and say, you know, there's so much talk about technology and cell phones. There's a whole group of teenagers here that want to make something with their hands, uh, and then that gets you know people really tune into that, and then it, it, it grows even bigger. Uh, do you still think the early adopter idea is true? Does a small group um, adopt the trend? And then it kind of filters downwards, or does it come from the bottom up? Well, I, I think the, the early adapters are having less importance, I think, you know, because we, we talk about in terms of technology, where the early adopter model was always the, the biggest, it's interesting that the person who uses technology today is the most sociable person. So in the past, the early adopter technology, the classic view of the geek, was somebody that didn't, you know, leave the library, leave his house. Now, technology is so much about communication, right, that really high school students are likely to be the spreaders of new technology, or the sidekick, or something like that, far more so than the traditional model, because they're interested in, in what technology does today, which is connects people and brings them together. I would assume that the book is mostly based on, on U.S. data, but do you have Well, the question was, uh, is there a lot of international? The book is probably about 85% uh, about the United States, but we, we, we have 10 trends that are, that are international to show how, how it applies in different countries and we update some of the things going on in the countries. You know, I was kind of stunned, you know, very interestingly in, in Europe, precisely in the places where the tax incentives and advantages of, um, advantages of having children were the highest, birth rates were the lowest. And so a lot of what we do in microtrends is we look for things that are counterintuitive. We don't, I, don't, I don't really spend a lot of time on things everybody knows. I either spend a lot of time on things that I think people probably know, but they're not really acting on, uh, or things they don't know, which I was really surprised <coughs> at, at really what we found in some of the European places. Uh, and it's interesting in the Conservative Party conference, they read the book and they used it in, in Great Britain. We picked at those people who are living together apart, because uh, there's this enormous growth of households and there are a lot of people uh, <coughs> in the UK who, in fact, even though they were going together uh, steady, they were not, in fact, you know, putting their households uh, together, and that created a whole series of new issues. We found that the birth rates were so low in some of the European countries that being an only child was becoming uh, a commonplace experience, and so the, what we call Eurostars, you know, the pamper children, be has become you know a dramatically different experience. And then we looked at places like Vietnam and China for counterintuitive trends where we found Chinese Picassos uh, or Vietnamese entrepreneurs. So the idea is I think that microtrends, the, these smaller 1% differences that, that I think can have a real impact on what society is, is like, you see them everywhere that there are various freedoms of different kinds and they develop differently and they develop uh, counterintuitively. So, and I don't know about that much, you know, I think there are some books in the long tail, there are books on differentiation, but what we try to do in the book is to illustrate, you know, microtrends not just in theory but really in practice. <coughs>